Uh, well, good afternoon. As most of you know, I've reached out to the legislative leaders uh, to schedule a special session for May 23rd. As I said to them, while most of the attention is focused in one remaining area where we don't have agreement, the work of the House, Senate, and administration resulted in some significant successes and progress uh, for Vermonters this year. But I've been clear since the day I was sworn in. In fact, since the day I announced I was running for governor, that it's my firm belief Vermonters need a break from constantly increasing taxes and fees. So to the surprising no one, and certainly not the legislature, I cannot support the budget and revenue bills that together increase property tax rates by nearly $34 million, especially when we have options. I do not make these decisions lightly, but I cannot support higher taxes in a year. We have $160 million more in new money as compared to last year. That's $82 million from organic economic activity, $34 million in unanticipated funds from the Attorney General's tobacco settlement, and $44 million in additional uh, and unanticipated revenue recently added to the budget. This $44 million received in the last month is money from taxpayers, which was over and above everyone's expectations. So I can't support asking Vermonters for an additional $34 million when there's a way to avoid it. My plan doesn't ask taxpayers for more money and yet fully funds school budgets passed in March and addresses some of the inefficiencies of our education system as our, as our K-12 schools continue to educate three fewer kids on average every single day. Briefly, as a reminder of what typically ha happens at the end of a session, or at least what I've experienced in my last 18 years, is that the, the legislature adjourns but sets a date for a veto session before July 1 to deal with any vetoes the governor may issue. This allows the legislature to either take care of any technical issues or override the governor's objections. That's what usually happens, and that's the tool in their toolbox to respond to vetoes. This year is a bit unusual, especially knowing they passed bills I would veto. Maybe this is a political calculation. I don't know, you'll have to ask them. But the point is, they left me with no choice but to use one of the few tools I have in my toolbox to ensure the executive branch has a voice in the process and call this special session. In order to minimize the time needed uh, for the special session itself, I've asked legislative leaders to meet this week to begin working towards a solution and have reserved multiple times each day in order to do so. To ensure our discussions in the special session are productive and in good faith, I've also invited Republican leadership from the House and Senate to participate so that everyone is on the same page. When an agreement is reached, knowing that I may not even have the budget or tax bill at that point, we can enact it through an amendment to those bills. I've also let legislative leaders know if they would rather, they can send me the bills immediately for veto and we can start over on the budget and yield bills in the special session. <clears throat> From my perspective, despite the tension that's obviously there, we are actually very close in what we are trying to achieve. Because with the approach I've outlined, we can prevent an unnecessary 33 million of property tax increase on Vermonters, fully fund school budgets approved in March, stabilize property tax rates for future years, and improve the efficiency of our education system. So we have more financial resources to reduce inequality in our schools and expand educational opportunities for our kids from cradle to career. And I believe we can achieve these goals using many of the same proposals that the legislature has worked on, although not all have passed. I'm open to changing some of the mechanisms, if that is their preference, and we can still accomplish their stated goal of reducing the unfunded liability in the teacher's retirement fund. And by the way, <clears throat> that 100 million in savings they keep talking about, 
won't materialize until uh, the year 2038. But we can still do that if they'd like. But it doesn't have to come at the expense of the nearly 200 million in property tax relief or the nearly 300 million in savings we can reinvest in our kids, both of which our analysts believe will be achieved in five years, not 20, like the legislature's proposal. I hope when legislative leaders take a step back and stop looking at individual elements of my plan in a vacuum, they'll see it's reasonable and responsible. And I think if they are willing to recognize that a K through 12 system that will soon serve fewer than 70,000 students is diverting resources from our kids, they recognize that doing nothing is not responsible and shouldn't be an option. Last year, we were able to work together to pass a budget and education financing bill that did not rely on any due taxes and fees. I am more than confident that we can accomplish the same this year. Again, as a reminder, because we have 160 million more in revenue than we did last year. When you consider all of this, an agreement that fully funds our school budgets and avoids raising taxes can be reached. With that, be happy to answer any questions you might have. Governor, why are you negotiating through the press instead of meeting directly with the legislative leaders like you could have last week? Well, again, uh, there was two, meeting, meeting two meetings that were canceled last week. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't want to meet. Mm -hmm. um, I, had, uh, I had proposed meeting this week, and I'm still hopeful that we'll hear back from them so that we can start to meet and iron out some of our differences. But my understanding is that you didn't have direct negotiations with lawmakers before last week, that we went the whole session without any real bargaining between your office and legislative leaders. Well, I don't, I don't think that's uh, accurate or factual. Uh, I think that uh, if you look back and you see all the times that our uh, commissioners and, and directors and, and secretaries went into different legislative committees, offered testimony, offered to, to uh, come uh, to uh, some resolution in, in different areas. But knowing uh, the bottom line is that I wasn't going to accept any bills that raised taxes and fees on Vermonters. Um, we didn't come to a point where uh, there was agreement. Uh, I, I uh, again, uh, over the last two or three weeks, I haven't, I haven't seen any outreach from them either. Right, but in the past, previous governors and previous legislatures the leaders of the executive branch, including the governor, and the leaders of the Senate and the House have actually gotten together to broker these deals. Well, I think and that doesn't seem to have happened. Right. And I'm just wondering why and why now, you know, we, we just finished the legislative session. Sure. Now we have to come back. And now you're negotiating for the press? Well, what it is? well again, I think over the last six years, uh, we've seen a supermajority where we had a, a Democrat that was a governor, a democratically controlled Senate, democratically controlled House of Representatives. I think it was pretty easy for them to get together on issues. That's not true. Before Governor, that, Governor Douglas negotiated. Well, maybe, was that the year that uh, they overrode his veto? No, on, the following on the budget? year they negotiated. I 2009? Was yep. 2010 is what I'm talking about. The Governor <coughs> negotiated with legislative leaders in 2010 on budget and tax issues. And they been more than willing, compromise more than willing. the end of the session. More than willing to negotiate. To, to Ann's point, uh, the letter that you sent to Mitzi and Tim was the date stamp was at the exact, it was sent to them at the exact time it was sent to all of us. Is that really a process that indicates a good faith effort to try to cultivate a meaningful dialogue? I would guess I would have to ask all of you. So if we sent the letter to them, uh, I'm sure we would have gotten FOIA for the letter at another date uh, so that you could see what the letter said. I'm just trying to get everything out in the open uh, so that we can have a process uh, that isn't uh, based on misinformation, uh, that we put everything out uh, in the public and, and are able to, uh, to move through. Uh, so any, so any negotiations you have this week or early next week with legislative leaders would be open to the media? Well, that's uh, entirely up to them as well. Um, I want to get together with them uh, first uh, to see what the, uh, what the rules uh, will be in terms of moving forward. Uh, I don't mind having it in public. Okay. Did, uh, did Republican legislators 
make a mistake by voting for these bills that you intend to be doing? Are you disappointed in them? No, I, I, I'm not sure uh, that they, I mean, you'd have to ask them, uh, but. Uh, well, you're going to veto what they support, so. Did they well, make a again, uh, if you look at the, the tax bill, the revenue bill, uh, I think uh, there were uh, many, Many Republicans, probably some well, Democrats. You campaigned with Randy Brock when he was running for lieutenant governor. You supported him. He supported you. Did he make a mistake voting for this? Well, again, I I said from the very beginning, I've been very clear over the last two years, I wasn't going to support uh, anything with a new tax and fee. And but he did. So that. did he make a mistake? Well, again, I don't know what he, he promised or, or what he uh, what he had said. I'm just telling you what I would do. Um, but uh, but again, they do things for their own reasons, and yeah, I, I don't hold it against any of them. He said you want uh, all correspondences related to this issue to be open to the public in the interest of transparency that Vermonters have a right to know what's being discussed. We're down to very few issues. Yeah, would, would you be uh, willing to extend that policy to correspondences that you and your administration have had with individual lawmakers for the whole of the session? I guess I'm not quite following it's something that you can't get now. I mean, just any correspondence that you or members of your administration have had with lawmakers over the course of the session. It's not exactly. Are you? Are you? Yeah, yeah, Peter, that's not. That's the, uh, under the exact under the public records law. We would be obligated to turn those over. Only the legislature could withhold those documents because they don't have the same public disclosure standard that the executive branch does. So, so we would be compelled to turn them over. They could, they could claim a privilege. That, that, that's what I'm asking, though. Are, are you all, is this administration committed to turning over those are public any documents and all correspondence? Now. Those are public documents now if they're coming from the executive branch. Okay. Yeah. Governor, on Monday you identified four bills that would for sure be covered. Right, tax budget, coming away, paid penalty. Are there others now? Is that a, um, can you tell us what? Work. Well, again, we're working our way through them. I think there was a flurry of activity on uh, on Saturday, and some of the uh, bills that I had concerned with, um, they they change. Uh, so we'll take a look at them as they come through. Uh, I signed a few today, uh, so that we received. Uh, we haven't received any of the the other ones at this point in time, but we'll take a look and, and uh, take each one individually. Um, the uh, uh, prescription drug uh, reimportation, I signed that, uh, and there was some other municipal bills uh, I signed. Why did you sign the prescription drug reimportation? Well, I'm, I'm in favor of doing whatever we can to reduce the costs on, on Vermonters. Uh, I, we're not sure we're going to do uh, uh, our best uh, to make sure that it, uh, the, the Agency of Human Services uh, does their due diligence in trying to accomplish that. Not sure what the outcome is going to be, but we'll do the best we can. How is an agreement close if uh, legislative leaders are opposed to using more one-time money to solve this problem? Well, they're using one-time money for other things. Uh, there are is with uh, this one-time money that you continually refer to uh, is money that I believe is an investment that will be paid back within this five-year period. Uh, again, I'm not sure that they can say the same. But they say it's an ongoing expense that they don't want to use that money to you know pay for an ongoing expense. And I guess the question is, I guess. If they, if they see it that way, um, how is an agreement close if they, if they don't want to put the money? Well, it's close from my perspective because some of the issues that uh, we believe that are in the plan uh, to implement the plan are uh, issues that they've, uh, they've worked on. So if we put it all together uh, and, and understand that I'm not going to sign anything uh, with a tax or fee, uh, then we can make progress. Did you reach out to... Joe and Don to see what time to work for them. They, they received the same letters uh, that uh, that the others did. But did you did anybody from your administration communicate with them to see when they would be available for the sit downs? I, not, I, in, not, yeah. in, not in offering, not before offering the times to the legislative majority's leadership. And if the if. Mitzi Johnson and Tim Ash are able to make a session, but it doesn't work for Joe or Don. Would you be willing to go ahead and have well, that I've already I already put that out. Um, so they received the same the same memo. Uh, I believe that uh, they've reached back out to us. I believe and said that they could uh, they're flexible could meet uh, um, some some if not all the meetings. So. Why, why do you want them in the room? 
Well, I think, again, they hold uh, some cards, too, in, in this, uh, in terms of rules, suspensions, and so forth. So if we want to get this done quickly, everyone should be at the table in order to do so. Could we be facing multiple special sessions? I hope not. That's a possibility, then. Um, well, again, I believe that we can come to conclusion on this uh, if we if we get together and understand uh, that I'm not going to, once again, I'm not going to support bills that uh, raise taxes and fees when we have $160 million with revenue, extra revenue uh, this year than, as opposed to last year. So I think it's reasonable to expect, I think Vermonters expect uh, that we'll, uh, we'll, we don't, from their standpoint, I, I'm not sure they can understand why uh, we would contemplate raising taxes on them when we have money, left, uh, more money than last year. Has JFO and your administration come to a consensus yet? I believe, uh, I believe that they have, um, that they've, uh, they've been working together uh, and uh, figuring out some of the, the ups and downs, but uh, maybe I can answer that. We're, we're working on a daily basis, exchanging information uh, as far as the five-year forecast and the savings um, that we believe are there. Uh, as far as the you know, five-year forecast of what can happen uh, if 9-11 were signed, as we all understand it today, versus a five-year forecast, if nothing happens, we're using consensus numbers there. Um, I think, as you, you'll continue to hear, uh, the same questions you've asked about can we achieve these ratio savings uh, or how would we achieve those ratio savings. That's less a matter of math than it is of will and working together over the next five years. So I, that's, that's less of an analyst mathematical exercise than it is, are we on board with this plan and can we all embrace it? Did the governor's office ask Donald Turner and the Republicans to put forward an amendment on the Pay Act that would um, extend the current year's budget in the event of government shutdown? Uh, I don't know if we asked them directly. I know we had some conversations about that because that was the question, what, what happens if uh, we don't come to uh, some agreement? And uh, it, it was suggested by, I think, their, uh, from their standpoint, that maybe a, a, some sort of continuing resolution would work uh, to prevent that from happening. How likely do you think it is that we'll see a continuing resolution? I, I hope uh, we don't have to, to come to that, I believe, again. Uh, that we are close in some respects. It may seem like we're far apart, but I believe we're, we're close uh, and uh, can come to agreement. But once again, uh, if it includes a, a tax or fee, I'm not signing it. In H-911, is it only the property tax related pieces that you have a concern with? Or I think at one point you had a concern with the way that they were responding to the federal tax changes. Is that still a concern for you as well? Well, I, again, I want to focus on the areas. There, there are some uh, pieces of both budgets uh, that, uh, that I'm not in agreement with. Um, but at this point in time, I'm willing to accept uh, some of that, uh, that I really just want to focus on the additional uh, Thirty-four million dollars in, in uh, additional tax uh, burden on Vermonters. That's what I want to focus on. So, uh, uh, if we do that and not open up everything else, uh, I believe that we can come to consensus. So you're willing really to let that piece of yes. that element stand? Yeah. I mean, there's and again, there's some yeah, there's some give and take. Uh, they went uh, over my growth rate uh, calculation by six or seven million dollars, I believe, uh, and I'm I'm ready to for forego that. Uh, in order to get to agreement. Senator Bash has now answered your letter with his own letter. Um, and he indicates that they'll determine on their own how they'll conduct this special session. Are you guys prepared to go through their committee process to... to uh, you have that letter? Yeah. Okay, we don't, we we don't have that letter, so to yeah. your question, Pete. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, Neil apparently received it before we did. Yeah. Well, again, if, if, they're, if, if they're saying uh, that they have control over the special session, that's absolutely correct. I call a session right. uh, from there. Uh, it's a separate branch of government. Right. Uh, they can do whatever they want uh, from that standpoint. But, so the question is, are you prepared and ready to go through the committees and work on this sure. proposal? I mean, we again, I, I don't know if there was any alternative for me. Uh, there was no veto session, as normally would, would happen at, at the end of a legislative session. So the only, th uh, the only thing I could do was call a special session, uh, knowing that uh, this is uh, pretty much starting over, or right. can be. 
So, cor correct me if I'm wrong, but from what I understood from what you've been saying, if you want to get together with them ahead of the special sure. session and try to work out a deal. That, that would be. And I think what I've heard from their side is they have no interest in that. They will bring 180 members into the fold. And are you okay with that? Well, I have to be okay with it because uh, that's their process. Uh, and if they want to uh, spend the time that way, that's their prerogative. Uh, again, uh, I'm calling a special session uh, in order for us to get through this. Uh, and uh, if they had wanted uh, to do something different, uh, then they should have had a veto session. And then they could have overrode my veto uh, if that's what they uh, thought they could do. So uh, from my standpoint, uh, again, we'll, we'll work through whatever process they initiate. But uh, my thought was, if we could, uh, if we could get together and, uh, and uh, uh, negotiate some some items, uh, that we could make this a, a lot easier on everyone. But uh, whatever process they decide to move forward with, uh, we'll we'll adhere to. Why if it's if it's if you're so close, and I would agree that you're not that far apart. Um, why couldn't there have been more active interaction last week during the conference committee process? Uh, that might have produced some additional movement. Why wait until the end and then say no? Well, again, I think that the natural reaction has been we have to raise taxes and fees. We have to do it. Uh, there's no other way uh, to accomplish this because uh, of different philosophical outlooks in terms of the education fund. Uh, I believe that we can manage the fund, and I believe that we have to put into place uh, initiatives that will save us money over the next five years. We can't continue on this unsustainable path uh, in terms of education uh, financing. So uh, from my standpoint, uh, coming uh, together in order to, uh, to prevent that from happening in the future uh, and, and not raise taxes this year was what we were trying to accomplish. Why do you How did you think law lawmakers would respond to an unprecedented March veto threat? What, what March? I said, how did you think the lawmakers would respond to an unprecedented, unprecedented March veto threat? And that's well, the first time I've ever heard of a governor threatening to veto a bill months yeah. before the end of the session. And I, I'm just wondering how you thought they'd respond to that. Well, I'm going to just read you the letter. And I'm sure you've all read it, but I just want to remind you of what the letter said. It said, dear legislators, if we work together with a focus on pro-growth policies and diligently work to ensure the costs of state government do not increase more than wages, Vermont's economy can again grow faster than the cost of living. Our state can be, uh, uh, I don't have my glasses on, I'm sorry, <laughs> measurably uh, more affordable each year for families and businesses. And we can sustainably uh, meet our obligations to the most vulnerable. These are the priorities of my administration. With these priorities in mind and with respect for the legislative process, I write to reiterate, reiterate my opposition to new taxes or fees in the biennium and provide um, examples of pro problematic uh, bills below. As we did last year, we need to provide Vermonters a break, an opportunity to keep more of what they earn. And I'm fully, uh, I'm fully committed uh, to ensuring uh, they uh, receive that mind, uh, that relief. However, many of these bills with new or higher taxes or fees does not contain other, uh, does contain other good ideas on which we can agree. My request is simple. Let's work together to find ways uh, for many of these proposals to advance while responding uh, the need to provide Vermonters with another year of relief that begins to moderate the burden of taxes and fees. And then I listed 13 bills. In the end, after the 13 bills were listed, I said, again, aside from these new taxes or higher uh, fees, many of these bills contain provisions I could support. Let's work together to find ways to advance some of these proposals while ensuring Vermonters can keep more of what they earn again this year. My team and I look forward to working with you to resolve these concerns and reach, as, uh, expeditious, uh, reach an expeditious conclusion to the legislative session. I don't call that a threatening letter. Did you meet with, with Tim and Mitzi right after that letter was we, we met weekly. 
Right, but did week. you actually discuss policy matters in those meetings? We, did you we, get done we talk about policy matters in every every single week. What they're mm -hmm. what they're moving forward with. What are they working on? Did you negotiate with them though? In those meetings. Just to reiterate what my bottom line was. Right, but that's not a negotiation. But, but it isn't a negotiation. It takes negotiation. It takes two parties to negotiate. I'm yeah, willing to negotiate. I was willing to. We we provided. On what? On every issue and every committee. Yeah, but if they're saying, you know, we want to raise taxes and you don't, then we have a problem. Yes. Right. Okay. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. I have a problem with raising taxes in a year that we have extra money. That's a problem for me. Okay. And I, re I continue weekly to reiterate that. I don't think it's any surprise. Mm -hmm. But that's not a compromise. That there's a difference between reiterating your stance and, and actually negotiating. So, so it sounds non-negotiable, and you've said it's that. not it's negotiable yeah, in terms of a tax or fee. So not when you have extra now? money on the bottom line. So you're taxes should be a last either, resort, right? as far as I'm concerned. Sure. Right. You've made and this decision. isn't the last resort. Not with 160 million dollars worth, worth of more revenue. So how are we any closer now than we were in March if it's non-negotiable? Well, the, the just tax and the fees aren't uh, aren't negotiable. Right. But there could be areas where they want to where they want to do things. Maybe they want to expedite. Maybe they want to broaden it. Maybe they want. Maybe they have other ideas of their own. I, I'm, we're willing to listen. How many how many votes do you have for your five year plan right now? I don't. Boy, I have no idea. I, your office hasn't reached out to members, and you have no idea. No idea in terms of the, the five years. Who is willing to step up and say, I'll vote for this? Well, we'll find out. You really, your shop has no idea? Well, obviously, uh, they, are, uh, they have uh, gotten together to decide that they didn't want to do that at the time. Uh, they were willing to move forward uh, with this legislation and, uh, and uh, with their own legislation uh, to raise taxes and fees. Uh, and uh, and so they voted in favor of that. But I, I'm I'm saying I'm not supporting that. So you have your plan, and it's understandable that you want to push that plan. I don't think anyone begrudges you for that. But you don't have any idea how many votes you can muster for it. Well, I think we can muster enough if we can get to a, a point in time when we can agree uh, on certain aspects of this uh, of this bill and come out together. We'll get enough to pass it. Why do you only want to address the property tax issue in the special session when there are other proposals that, um, that you've supported, like the merger of the liquor and lottery um, that would die, that would basically you know, be punted to the future if, um, if that was the case? Well, again, if they had decided uh, that they wanted to take that up and other provisions, other bills uh, that they never got to, uh, they would have stayed an extra day or two to, uh, to, to be able to accomplish that. They said uh, that they were done. Uh, their, uh, the session was done, and they were um, uh, they were all in agreement that the uh, the session was finished. So I have to accept that part. You worried at all, given the 117 and 14 House vote in the end, that you could be overridden? No. Here. I I think when you take when you take the difference. I mean, I mean again, you have to look at the, both bills together uh, because they're connected. Um, you have a, you have our tax revenue bill, uh, and then you have the uh, and the way to spend it. So it's a lot easier uh, to uh, to spend money than it is to raise it. Uh, so I think the vote was uh, was substantial uh, in terms of uh, the revenue, uh, substantially closer in terms of the revenue bill uh, than the overall uh, budget. And and I'm again I'm sure there were a lot of provisions within the budget bill. Uh, that uh, the members uh, wanted to vote for. Can you assure us that there will be no shutdown the uh, I can't assure you of anything uh, at this point. No. Why this year are you not going to do the you did last year? Right. Right. Um, I thought uh, that that was the wrong approach last year. I still uh, felt it was uh, uh, that we uh, we negotiated and uh, came to a conclusion. I wish I had, uh, in some respects had stuck to the $25 million uh, state uh, teacher health care contract uh, that now seems to be a good idea. It wasn't a good idea last year, but it's, I think it's got more merit this year. If we'd done that, we wouldn't have been, uh, I don't think we'd be in the position we're in this year. So um, I believe uh, that, I believe Vermonters are, are solidly behind this. 
uh, they don't want to see more taxes and fees in a year that we have more revenue. So I, uh, I'm ready to, to stick it out. What? Get the, you're fighting for a property tax rate uh, to state level. Um, if a person's house value goes up, their taxes will still go up. We've been over that before. Right. Uh, and you argue that that's comparable to income tax increasing if your income increases. But there's a dramatic difference between those two because if your income increases, you have more money to pay the tax bill. If your house value increases, you don't have any more money unless you sell your house. So if property taxes go up because of growth in the grand list, anybody who's house value goes up is going to see a tax increase. Yeah, not arguing that at all, but what I am arguing is uh, the fact that we're going to make it, uh, or the legislature has made it worse by raising raising the rate. So you're, it's still going to happen. Uh, you're, you're, the grand list will go up because of more activity, uh, more, more development, uh, more housing on the market, uh, and values going up. That's going to happen. Uh, by putting this into place, by voting in terms of uh, a property uh, tax rate increase, you're just going to make the, you're, the, the problem's going to be that much worse than it is today. So I'm trying to prevent that from happening. You, uh, you talked a lot about your ability to foster meaningful and collaborative relationships with both your allies and your adversaries throughout your gubernatorial campaign. You said that's been a hallmark of, of your political career. Um, why do you think that uh, your relationship with Democratic leadership has fallen into such disrepair? I think it's a two-year cycle. It's campaign year. Uh, do you do you think you bear any responsibility for the well, state of state of relationship that you I'm, have right now? I'm I'm sure we all uh, have a share of blame. I'm sure we do. Uh, but at the same time, I I, can't, I don't know how it could be more clear. Over the last two years, uh, about no tax and fees. I just don't know how I could be any more clear than I have been. Uh, so for, for them to get to the end and think uh, that I was just going to to uh, change my perspective on that, uh, I just I, I don't but understand. Well, in the constitutional arrangement where we have separate but equal branches of government, did you get to decide that on everybody else's behalf? The governor gets to decide uh, what's best for Vermonters. And that is the power of being governor, uh, that to veto bills that you feel would be detrimental to Vermont. And I, I, I'm prepared to do that. To what? follow up on what Pete just asked, you know, you have a reputation for being the nicest guy in the world. And it just is kind of interesting, you know, why are you using DC tactics with the threat of a CR? Well, I'm not using that threat. I, I, I just said, I, I read something from March. I, I, uh, you've read the letter uh, that I sent out. I, I believe we're close and we come to a resolution. That doesn't sound like a DC tactic to me. Well, government shutdown sure sounds like it. I'm, saying, I'm not saying we're gonna have a government shutdown. I'm saying, I said in the, uh, in the memo to them that I believe we get together and uh, meet uh, over the next week uh, come into session on Wednesday. I believe that if we can get an agreement ironed out, that we could be out of here by Friday. That doesn't sound like a DC tactic. But you are prepared to let state government shut down over uh, this well, We're going to continue dollars. to work on this, uh, and we're, we're just going to continue to work to try to come to a resolution. I'm willing to, to do that. But again, without any increase in taxes and fees. What happens if the legislature decides, much like you have, that they're an equal branch of government, they've been elected, and they decide what's best for Vermonters, and it's not you, it's not your idea? Well, they get to decide that in November. Well, no, I, I phrased it wrong. If your idea is not best for Vermonters, what if they, what if they are just as intransigent and refuse to move? I mean, you have your equal branches of government. As much exactly. as you want to decrease something, you can't do it, and they can't either. Right. Um, it, no, neither of you can do that. Right. So I, I guess I'm struggling to see the path forward here. Well, I, I believe there is a path forward. And I believe that we have a plan uh, that makes a lot of sense, uh, that it makes a lot of sense for taxpayers in particular. And uh, we're prepared to, to uh, make that argument. 
You said it's possible to both pay down the pension obligations and avoid the tax increase, tax rate, tax rate increase. How, how is that possible? What, what's the path forward to have both of those things happen at the same time? Well, again, with our proposal, we believe uh, that there's savings upwards to $475 million. Mm -hmm. In future years, proposal. though, I mean, how do you I'm make sorry? it work? How do you make it work for this for this coming fiscal year, though? Well, it's a five-year plan. Again, and oh, you mean in terms of using, uh, utilizing some of the one-time money to buy that down, right. right? And then pay it back over the five years with the savings. But they want to use that money for the pension obligations. They want to use it for the well, tax rate. How do you both get it? Again, uh, they're to pay down the the. Uh, um, uh, retirement obligations, uh, uh, their plan would do that, um, wouldn't receive the savings that our plan does in the short term uh, or even in the long term. Uh, you can still do that. If we pay this back over the next five years, pay back uh, this the, the, the so-called borrowing uh, of these dollars, uh, they can utilize it. That could be part of the negotiation. They can utilize it for teacher retirement. What's well, not so-called borrowing? Is it you call it borrowing? Yeah, it's borrowing. Yeah, but uh, some have not uh, utilized that term enough. I'm glad to hear we're we're starting to use it more, because it is borrowing the money uh, to pay down uh, to pay down the, the tax rate and put this plan into place over the next five years, and it gets repaid. It's not just one-time spending. It's utilizing money uh, and uh, and uh, to uh, to get us to a conclusion that's beneficial for Vermont. I'm just I'm still not clear. Are you saying that they could use some money to pay down the pension obligations in the future, but not this fiscal year? Like it, it's kind of a trade-off between using money for your plan or using the money for the pension obligations. Yeah, I'm saying you can use the savings if you put if if we move forward with the plan that we have. Uh, there will be savings along the way, uh, and uh, we believe $475 million worth of savings as the plan uh, is initiated uh, today. Uh, you can utilize some of that uh, to, to put back into teacher retirement if you want. I'd rather put it back into um, early care and learning, uh, technical education, and so forth, put it back into the education system, but you can do whatever you want with it. That could be part of the negotiation. But you're, so you're saying borrow some more money this no. year in addition, so that you could also do their pension bond. No, not for this year. No, I'm saying uh, they can utilize over the next five years, make this part of the plan, where you can utilize the savings to go back in for teacher retirement. Postpone the pension buy down right. until sometime in the future. Savings the savings for 2038, no matter when you buy it down. And, and if I might add, Governor, um, they already have $10 million in their settlement tobacco um, dispersal. They, have 14 million from the tobacco settlement, and I believe they put at least 10 million into the retirement fund. So they have already started, you know, with 10 million there, and now they want to put another 33 million in. And to your question, Neil, on the plan and whether there's support, I would point out, as we have um, every chance we get, this is a plan that has several components to it, and they've already passed two of those components at least. Um, they've got the commission, the task force uh, ratio commission is in 911. They have passed the special ed bill, which we've been looking at. They didn't even begin to discuss healthcare negotiations until the end of April. Unfortunately, um, those not, not come out of committee, but we've discussed that for two years and have recommendations from the commission. Um, so there are several areas of the broader plan where there's already been strong support. And I think what this boils down to is how are you going to finance it? Are you going to finance it by using $33 million in a property tax increase? Or are you going to um, use the one-time money, pay it back with the savings that you achieve once you have the plan in place, implement it, and manage it? And the reason I ask is he had an interview with Representative Turner, who you've invited to the table, who says he doesn't support it. Um, and so that's why I wonder, where where is the support for it? Where He's been, always been very public about his discomfort with using one-time money for one-time expenditures. He has seen the plan um, that we have put together will return that one-time money to the general fund over a period of years, and I think that he's getting some comfort with that. He has other di ideas. Um, he's welcome to the table. He's presented his ideas uh, to, to the speaker. Um, so, you know, all ideas on the table, and uh, it makes sense to have everyone there who's got a vested interest in it. Speaker Johnson said that before she meets with you, she wants to see a list of the bills that you're going to, you plan on vetoing. Um, 
when do you think, or, or do you plan on providing a list uh, to them? Uh, well, I'll veto them as uh, I see fit as they come in. So it's still too early to, to tell or for you to say what's on the uh, yeah. list? I, I, yes, too early to tell. Uh, we'll still take a look at those, but I <laughs> fail to see what that has to do with anything at this point. They're the, they're the bodies. Uh, the legislature decided not to come back for a veto session. Was there a reason? They thought the, their work was done. Um, in terms of you know, your decision to decide when to call them back for a special session, uh, at any point did you consider seeing what, what they thought would be a good time for that? Uh, no. Uh, in terms of, I, th I thought uh, we should get back uh, together as soon as possible and not have it uh, extend into to June. Uh, in some uh, respects, uh, not having the appropriations bill uh, and the uh, and the the revenue bill uh, gave us some flexibility in terms of amending. Uh, so the sooner we get back, uh, this, the better, I believe. But if, again, as I stated uh, in my opening remarks, if they uh, would rather start fresh and not have those, uh, then just send me the bills and I'll, uh, I'll beat them, them both. Governor, I just want to uh, rewind back to the prescription drug reimportation bill for a minute. Uh, one of the concerns that people brought up that opposed it was safety concerns. Do you have any safety concerns about this? Well, again, uh, our agency of human services will be working uh, uh, hand in hand with with others uh, to make sure that it's uh, it's safe. So um, I'm I'm confident in our human, agency of human services. Are you uh, going to be a candidate for election? I, yes, I plan to be. Yes, I'll be turning my petition in at the end of the month. This does not, uh, this conflict does not inform that or change that in any way? No, no, not at all. Are you going to be racing this summer? I haven't decided uh, that yet. Uh, we'll take it one race at a time. I'm pretty busy uh, here in the building right now. We'll see, we'll see how things work out. Which parades do you plan to skip? Uh, well, you can't get to them all, uh, obviously. Uh, you know, I've, uh, I always miss uh, parades every single year, uh, so I'll get to as many as I can. I know you won't miss the Bennington Battle Day Parade. Yeah, I usually go to that one, uh, so we'll, we'll see. How long do you think you can keep up the no taxes and fees commitment before just the tension over that becomes too much to you? Will you campaign you on that, for example, like as you're going into the fall? Will you campaign on no new taxes oh, and fees again? Well, we'll take a look at that time. If we uh, if we give Vermonters a break and we're able to uh, to put policies into place, program policies where, where we can grow the economy, as I we've been striving to do, we've done a lot of good work within government. Uh, we've also uh, been able to put some initiatives forward with the help of the legislature uh, to try and grow the economy and and try to make uh, Vermont more attractive. So if that happens, I believe we'll see more like revenue growth. We saw $82 million more this year than we did the previous year, and, and plus the, uh, the additional $44 million. So we're on the right track. Uh, we just have to keep going and solidifying that and, uh, and keeping our eye on, on areas where we can, uh, again, grow the economy and make Vermont more affordable. There was a fair bit of political rhetoric on all sides, but from the people in your office last week in the closing days of the session. Uh, there were some uh, uh, implications that the JFO was not playing straight. Um, is that going to be toned down? Should it have been toned down? And does the J JFO deserve an apology? Yeah, well, the, the emotions run high at the end of the session. I have a great deal of respect uh, for the JFO. I've worked with them uh, over the last 18 years in many different capacities. And um, so I, I have a great deal of faith in them, as does our, um, our uh, different uh, departments, uh, particularly uh, tax. Uh, and uh, we're back on the right track, I believe, and, and we're uh, conferring with one another. And maybe Kai can uh, reiterate that we have been able to continue to work. Yeah, they're, they're working together on a, on a daily basis, the JFO analysts and my uh, policy analysts and, and statisticians and economists. And, and just sharing the data we have and, and seeing what data they have. And again, largely when it comes to a forecast of revenue components and costs in the education fund, we're we're on the same page uh, on these numbers. The pro the pro is asking for an apology. Uh, I'm sorry? The pro is asking for an apology for the playing politics comment. Uh, 
love the JFO. Is that something that's working on? Um, I apologize to the, the JFO. I have a question. That I, would, I, would, I would like to add, though, I think Karen O'Neill uh, is deserved an apology uh, by the uh, Senate Commerce uh, or Economic Development Committee for, for the ways you've treated in the committee. Would uh, you like to reappoint her? Uh, we haven't, I haven't even contemplated that at this point in time. You could. Could, but could. Okay. I have a question that has nothing to do with the budget. Um, Thank you. <laughs> are you satisfied with what's been done this session on school safety? Uh, is there anything more that needs to be done, either special session or coming months or next year? We uh, we uh, haven't appointed our task force, and we need to. Um, we want to take a look at that over the summer, and uh, I believe that there will be other recommendations uh, put forward, um, and we'll go back at that uh, if I'm still in the same position next year uh, to try and do whatever we can to, to keep our schools and communities safer. The, uh, the threatening bill uh, uh, did not make it through the legislature. Is it a disappointment? It is a disappointment, uh, I think, for all sides. And uh, again, it's one of those, those issues uh, that, that uh, the last day of the session, had there been another day or two, maybe it would have uh, made it. But again, uh, that's just not the way uh, the legislative process works sometimes. There are some paid family leave advocates who are going to be holding an event tomorrow uh, suggesting that you're siding with corporate interests over the people of Vermont, the working people of Vermont, and that uh, your desire to protect corporate interests is the reason that you'll be presumably vetoing that bill. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about the affordability of Vermont, and I, I understand I share uh, in, their, in their goals uh, to provide for uh, those who, who need uh, need help during the during the times of uh, family crisis and uh, and otherwise, so uh, I believe that this is not a path forward. Uh, I've uh, offered in the past uh, that maybe it could be a volunteer effort uh, that we could put forward. Uh, New Hampshire was looking at uh, something similar, and maybe we could join forces with them. But uh, the conversation is not over. But it is for this year. It's a tax. It's a tax or a fee. Water quality bill passed without the funding or the pathway to funding um, piece in it. It does have some other pieces like the lake and crisis designation. Um, are you comfortable with the way that, that bill came out? Well, again, we haven't looked at it yet. We haven't received it yet, uh, but we'll take a look and see what's left. I do understand that the uh, funding uh, uh, piece had been removed from the bill. So we'll uh, we'll take a look. What what bills left? do you have that you haven't acted on yet, if any? I don't think there are any. I don't think there's anything right now. I think I've signed everything. So the drug committee, just the drug importation was yeah. today, and that and well, there was four pending. or five others, uh, okay. municipal bills and so forth, that uh, that were passed. There was a, a technical bill for transportation, a technical bill for municipalities, campaign finance laws, and small changes to the campaign finance law. Uh, prescription drug bill. Um, there was a bill on short-term health insurance and association health plans. Um, and we are going to be signing one tomorrow um, with respect to reinsurance companies. Oh. So, the only ones so all those were signed except for re the reinsurance? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had a question on corrections. Okay. Um, where is the contract, new contract issue to replace Canto? It's uh, forbidden. Yes, the RFP process has uh, been initiated, um, and, uh, and I don't know if we've heard anything back at this uh, point. I haven't heard back from corrections as to whether the um, end date on the proposal, the RFP, has reached yet, or if they have actually analyzed any proposals and have a recommendation yet. And I think there are four ongoing investigations. Have they concluded anything? I'm not that I'm aware of. Is that even confidence? It's been six months, seven months since the incidents occurred. Uh, well, again, we're taking Couldn't action. Take that long to figure out we're taking action happened. at this point in time. Uh, we want a replacement for. But that's for the being facility. Facility. for the four incidents. Well, that's 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 yeah, the investigations. I, I, I can't speak to uh, how why it's taking so long. When I interviewed you last summer, um, you talked about differentiating. I understand you don't control the criminal justice system, but people were afraid of versus people were mad at. Right. I, and I, I think I gave credit to Governor Shelman for that line. You did. Uh, have you tried to do anything about that? 
well, I formal think, commission of some sort yeah. to review some sentences from the past. Yeah, I believe you come to I lower believe the there, number of population. You're here. The judicial branch and, and others and advocates are way ahead of me on that. Uh, we've seen a number of bills, uh, even in this session. Uh, there's an expungement uh, effort on the part uh, of Chittenden County and Windsor County, I believe. I mean, there's there are initiatives that are happening uh, right now, I believe, in that regard. Do you support the policy where parents cannot touch their children if they're in pressure? I, I'm, I'm not even aware of that. If a mother goes to see their kid in Old Court in Springfield, they're not allowed to touch them. Can't shake their hands, can't hug them, can't do anything like that. Afraid of passing drugs and things. Yeah, I'm not aware of, uh, of that. I'd be happy to look into it, but I, I'm not aware of that. Uh, good. When they're kids, you mean not juveniles? Well, no, no, no. Yeah. Adults. And, and if you have a child who's in Newport and you go to see your child, you may not touch their child. Well, I, I, 20 years old, 30 years old. I'm sure there's protocols in place uh, to try and uh, protect in certain ways. I just don't, I can't speak to it. Can you look into it? Sure, sure. Okay. I have another question on uh, Form HI-144, which is the form that people uh, have spoken to. This would be a time. Yeah. <laughs> you familiar with that? Yeah. Um, according to a woman I talked to at the tax department who rolled her eyes, it's based on trust. That you don't have to provide any documentation to represent your actual income. We, we have a voluntary tax back. system where a lot is based on the good faith of, of filers putting the right numbers in. Increasingly, we have a lot better data to be able to match with other sorts of information, wage, Social Security, Department of Labor. Uh, but uh, I think I wouldn't be the first tax commissioner uh, to say that the HI-144 is the household income form that um, determines income sensitivity uh, has a lot of complexity to it. It's very difficult to administer, and it is very difficult to, to enforce or to uh, check the credibility of the numbers. But increasingly, we're, we're getting better there with the, with the VTAC system. But I think uh, a lot of folks in this building and the tax department would love to see reforms to how we do household income. Speaking of tax enforcement, how is the use tax collection going this year with the April returns? Uh, I think we're, we're, we're even with the use tax table, uh, the safe harbor amount having been halved due to uh, certain large online retailers beginning to, to collect and remit. Um, even with that revenue change, we still have more in, in voluntary use tax payments uh, on the IN 111, the income tax form. And we have, uh, I think, close to double the uh, rate of filers who are paying use tax with their income tax re uh, is return. 10% before, is it right? Or is it like 20% now? Yes, yeah. Gen generally, I think it was 8 or 9% statewide, and, and now it's close to 16 or 18%. I haven't checked recently. But. And so it's the same with Dr. Dinosaur, where you, you don't review information about people's income? Uh, the tax department doesn't do that, Dr. Dinosaur. That's AHS, I believe. Um, we, there may be some data matching going on. But. Mm -hmm. yeah, we have a 2 o'clock. Okay. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you. Thank you.